Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. As predicted, Week 12 of college football ended up being a fairly uneventful week, but we still had some pretty exciting games. We saw three top 25 teams lose. Of course, the Michigan-Wisconsin game being the only ranked versus ranked matchup. Wisconsin ended up taking care of business yet again. North Carolina State fell inches short of defeating Wake Forest. That was another ranked team that lost to an unranked team. And then Oklahoma State losing at home in an upset to the Kansas State Wildcats. That was probably the biggest shocker of the day. We did have Notre Dame playing in a close game against Navy. Miami had to pull away late against Virginia, trailing by 14 twice in that game. So all in all, it was a fairly fun week of college football, but the teams that should have won ended up winning with the exception of a few. The top four should stay the same going into the college football playoff rankings tomorrow night, and it's going to set up a huge Week 13 rivalry week. Uh, it's going to be a huge week of college football. We're going to recap what happened in Week 12, see how we did on predictions, and give you our, give you our teams that are trending up and trending down. So without further ado... Yet again, another solid week in Week 12, going 28-10, which rounded up as a 74% winning percentage. That brings our overall to 363-116, and which is not half bad through 12 weeks of the season. Hopefully, we'll get up to 400 wins by uh, the end of Week 13. That's a little bit of a stretch, but our goal of 75% or better uh, should end up working out for us unless we just collapse here in Week 13, which I do not expect to happen. So overall, round that up, 76% winning percentage through uh, 12 weeks. 363 wins, not too bad. Now, our team's trending down. Oklahoma State, they lost at home to Kansas State this week, and it was a very, very impressive performance by the Wildcats. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, Oklahoma State, a team that's lost two of their past three now, could have been three out of their past three, narrowly beating Iowa State on the road 49-42. to They lost to Oklahoma, and they lost at home to, to Kansas State, and that was one of the bigger upsets in the Bill Snyder era for the, for the Wildcats, and for Oklahoma State, uh, being a team that still had a chance, uh, not a great one, but still had a chance at the Big 12 championship game, uh, this has just been a really disappointing season for them. I had them going 10-2 and two and facing Oklahoma again in the Big 12 tra- championship. Now they're 8-3, and three. should finish the season 9-3, and three, but still a pretty uh, disappointing season for a team that some people had making the college football playoff. And then Iowa. Now, I had Iowa on my team's trending up just a few weeks ago. They defeated Ohio State, killed them at home, and then went back-to-back losses to Wisconsin and now Purdue this past week. Now, the Wisconsin game was understandable, but uh, I think Wisconsin held them to 66 yards of total offense in that game. Not very impressive for the Hawkeyes. And then losing at home to Purdue without their starting quarterback, that was a 24-15 loss. It's very disappointing for Iowa, a uh, team that jumped to 20th in the nation after their win over Ohio State. They are bowl eligible. They're 6-5. and five. They've got a game next week. They should be able to get that uh, up to 7-5. and five. Uh, but it's, we're going to have to play that by ear. But this has been pretty disappointing for Iowa for a team that could have potentially finished strong, especially with everything and all the talks coming after that Ohio State victory. And then UCLA, they just fired their head coach, Jim Mora. If you haven't seen that in the news, they are 5-6 and six right now. And the reason they fired him, I think, is because after last year's 4-8 uh, season, a, t- a season that they thought was going to be very promising, this was the year they were supposed to get back on track. I had them going 9-3. Of course, missed the mark there. Josh Rosen, with the talent that they had on that Bruins t- uh, on that Bruins team, I think they expected Jim Moore to get more of his team. I know they've dealt with injuries throughout this season, but 5-6 to six is unacceptable. And then losing a heartbreaker to USC, a 28-23 to 23 loss this past weekend, just uh, hurt their cause even more. Mora's out. They're five and six. Their last game of the season comes against California, who is also five and six. So the winner of that will, of course, go to a bowl game. So that's going to be a huge game for both teams. Uh, and and it has that UCLA. That is a bit of a, bit of a perk for them, but still a very disappointing season for the Bruins, and that's why I have them trending down. And then on teams trending up, Texas. Three out of the past four games they have won in Big 12 play. They are now bell eligible. They have a game against Texas Tech to close out the season. They can easily finish 7-5, and five, which is a pretty solid uh, year under Tom Herman for their first year as head coach of the Longhorns. I know uh, Texas fans are hoping to get back to the national prominence they used to be, you know, back when they had Mac Brown, Vince Young was there. Uh, it's been a while. Even back in 2009, they did make the national championship game. So they're hoping to get back to that type of Texas-style football. I think Tom Herman's going to get them there. 7-5, and five, though, is not a bad first year to start getting to that point. And then Missouri, a team that I thought was going to just miss out on the bowl game this season. thought they were just a little bit of a year away. I knew the defense had improved. Drew Locke, probably one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. He's won five straight games for the Tigers. Uh, they are now sitting at 6-5 and five and should probably get to 7-5 and five facing a horrible Arkansas team uh, the day after Thanksgiving. And then Kansas State, as we've mentioned, went on the road and defeated Oklahoma State. He was 13th in the nation. 
Uh, it was just a really impressive victory. Skylar Thompson, their quarterback, did a great job. Uh, really, I mean, he's kind of come onto the scene. We, you know, thought Jesse Ars was going to be starting quarterback. I know they uh, dealt with some injuries. He's done a great job coming onto the scene. Led them to a victory over Oklahoma State on the road. Kansas State should be able to get to seven and five. Uh, the close of the year was another fairly solid season for Bill Snyder and the Wildcats. So all in all, these are the teams I have trending up and trending down. Keep in mind that I don't put teams that are usually in the top 10, top 15, sometimes even the top 20 uh, in there unless I just have a really good reason to, such as last week after Miami's dominant win over Notre Dame. So, But usually I try to keep teams that are in the middle of the pack that don't get much recognition with everything that's going on in the college football playoff rankings. I like to throw these teams in there uh, that maybe should deserve some recognition like Texas, Missouri, and Kansas State or teams that people are talking about but not too much that are trending down, such as these three teams here. Now, having said that, keep in mind the college football playoff rankings going into the last week of the season come out tomorrow. We will have a college football playoff uh, rankings analysis the day after that Wednesday. We will also have our Week 13 preview coming out on Wednesday to preview some of the top games that are coming up. Football starts Thursday night, Thanksgiving night. We've got the Egg Bowl between Ole Miss and Mississippi State, and it carries on all throughout Saturday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Now, I'd like you guys to comment. Leave uh, what you guys think will be the best game of this weekend, this Thanksgiving weekend. Definitely, I think top one's got to be Alabama and Auburn when we're going to the SEC championship game. But there are tons of others out there that are going to be some big games. We're also, remember on our Week 13 preview, we're going to address our Heisman watch. I think Baker Mayfield is the, uh, the front runner right now. But what do you guys think about all his uh, antics against Kansas, uh, Kansas this past weekend? You know, he has uh, threw some gestures out at the Jayhawks this past week. And one thing I've got to mention on that is people are saying it's a really bad thing. And yes, what he did was unacceptable. But keep in mind, one player... Johnny Manziel. So having said that, make sure you watch out for our Week 13 preview, the College Football Playoff Analysis on coming out on Wednesday. Thank you for watching. Please, please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.